Hello and welcome to the Box Score Breakdown Show presented by Hoopball. My name is Adrian Benjamins and I'm joined by Neil Rochelani. And this episode is brought to you by Hawaiian Isles Kona Coffee Company. Taste the Kona difference. Head over to HawaiianIsles.com. You could also find their delicious coffee over at Amazon. Neil, how are you doing, brother? I heard it is very cold where you were. You did a little bit of traveling. How are you? How did you hold up, man? I survived, which is probably all you can do when it's um, negative 20 below zero. When we drove up to this place in this cabin up in Wisconsin, um, it was negative 24 degrees when we parked the car. And I have never, I could probably survive maybe 30 seconds without wanting to, I don't know, die. (laughs) (laughs) And that's all I can say. It was, it was cold. Uh, I'm now in a balmy 12 degrees back in Chicago. So it feels, it's 40 degrees warmer, which actually feels a little bit nicer. But, um, I'm surviving. How are you? A lot of hoops tonight. A lot of hoops over the last couple of days. My man Jokic had a great game there tonight. Um, you've been following uh, the, the the games the last couple of days. How how are your teams yeah. doing? How's uh, how's uh, life in fantasy land? My teams are not doing good, man. I oh. lost. Uh, well, as as you uh, know, I lost Victor Oladipo oh, in my shoot. main home league. Right. Uh, I have you know. It's really strange though, because I, I picked up Okafor, who went, who had a thirty-point uh, monster game the other night. Um, I Dennis Smith Jr. starting to turn around a little bit. I traded for Luka Doncic in that league, who uh, we'll get into tonight had a monster thirty-point triple double tonight. So I've done some good things in that league, but man, losing Clint Capella. Losing Victor Oladipo for the season, uh, Kyle Anderson. It's uh, I just I just can't win. It's just too deep of a league, and there's it's 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 tough, man. How are you doing in your leagues? Oh, I'm sitting pretty, which is why I asked you because I really wanted to come back to me, <laughs> <laughs> so I can tell you. Home league, um, currently in first, just trying to not make any two major mistakes. I don't know if I can be caught. I probably could be caught, but um, I feel like if I can get a few more points in my roto league, I should. And someone catches me, so be it. Um, in uh, head-to-head leagues, uh, one win, one loss. Um, first place in one, second place in the other. Um, so I'm happy. I'm happy with my fantasy nice. leagues this year. Um, I love it. We got any fantasy news to talk about? You, I, want, you want to talk about the weather struggles out in California? Uh, oh, yeah. man. Things have really turned around in Southern California, Neil. We had some really bad rain, which... That must sound like a vacation to you, having like a little <laughs> bit of rain, right? But um, yeah, it's it was 76 degrees in Southern California today. The sun was out all day. Uh, I feel like winter's already ended over here. So uh, I, it's complete opposite. You know, before we started recording, you were telling me that this Wednesday, uh, what was what was going to go down, you said, on a Wednesday? <sighs> Here's the forecast, and I know forecast can change, but as of now, uh, and this is Sunday evening, Wednesday is supposed to be a high of negative 13, a low of negative 21, and a wind chill of negative 50 here in Chicago. Wow. I, it, I just, I, I kind of just want to see what that's like for about five seconds. So we'll see. That's so crazy. Well, okay, we got a pretty big slate of games. I'm not really seeing any major news and notes and uh, some of the stuff that I do want to talk about, we can cover in these games. So should we jump right into it? Oh, that's you want you wanted to give a shout out to us. Uh, yes. Well, why don't you go ahead and start, and then I'll so, I can follow up. We got a really great message from Decky in the forum in the Hoopball forum. Put together a really great message. Uh, looks like he likes the show. Fan of the show had some great thoughts on how we can make the show better. And uh, Neil and I, we greatly appreciate when we get feedback like this. Um, Obviously, a lot of thought went into this message. It was uh, it was great. And so shout out to Decky. We we love the feedback. And uh, we're going to take a look at maybe making some format changes possibly to the show, but want to let 
want to let you guys know the way that Neil and I currently do the show is we take turns leading. One person, one host will start go into a team, right? The next person will chime in, give his thoughts. Maybe that person missed something or just to give interject his thoughts. Maybe they don't agree. They do agree. Then that same person goes into the next team. And we, we have been doing it. We've been doing the shows this way because I've always felt like it's the smoothest, quickest way to get a show done. Would you agree, Neil? Uh, so far, the best we know. <laughs> it's the quickest yes. way for sure. Yes, it works for us pretty well. So we're going to continue in the short term to keep doing it that way. But Neil and I are always open. Man, we, we want this show to be as great as possible. And we're doing the show for the listeners. So any feedback you guys have on what we can do to make the show more enjoyable or just more just easy for you guys to listen to or just so that you guys can digest the information better. We are always open to suggestions and just huge shout out to Decky for leaving us a great message, man. Yeah, and I'll just echo that saying I appreciate the comments and the feedback from him as long and and as well we don't want to make any changes hastily. We want to kind of really walk through and make sure if we do change the format, it makes sense to us and um, it makes sense to the listener. So we just don't, I thought about just trying to do something different tonight, but I think we're going to walk through it and really make sure we know what we're doing before we make a change. So um, we'll start to talk about it and maybe, maybe in the short term or medium term, we'll make changes. So thank you so much for the feedback. You know, we got a nine game slate. How about this? How about, the next time there's like a four or five game slate, that'll be maybe a good time to experiment on the format. Cause I feel like if we made a change to a nine game slate and it, you know, we're not used to it. So it could really extend this show from being like an hour long to maybe being like an hour and a half long or something like that. So yeah, fair enough. Maybe, we should probably experiment yeah. with different types of things and see what works. But yeah, let, let's, let's stick. We're going to stick around for now uh, for how it is. And then you want to hop in? Is it your turn? My turn. Let's do it. I don't know, but I'll tell you what, man. Let me just take the driving wheel. I'll take the lead on this one. All right. Uh, I also I'm basically following Basketball Monsters list of games, so I'm just gonna go in order how they have it. They had the Kings and the Clippers up first today, and the Clippers getting the victory here, 122 to 108. I'm gonna jump over to the Kings side and uh, just kind of, uh, you know, we're not gonna go through every single player. Just what stands out to us. And uh, to me, De'Aaron Fox has been fantastic this season. 21 points, 3 assists, 4 rebounds, 8 of 16 shooting from the field, 1-3, 4 of 5 from the line. Was dealing with a little bit of foul trouble, had 5 fouls, but still played 32 minutes, had a great game. Buddy Heald's been balling as well, shooting really well. Um, shooting wasn't so great tonight. It was only 6 of 17 from the field, but still had 16 points, 2 steals, 5 assists. Four rebounds. He's been pretty good. Shumpert, uh, I don't trust this guy for fantasy, but had a pretty good game tonight. 16 points, two assists, six boards, three threes on five of 13 shooting from the field, three of four from the line. Um, what else? Bagley, he's been coming around. He only saw 20 minutes here tonight. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not seeing any kind of injury, so I don't know if it was a matchup thing, but I expect him to really get a boost uh, in the second half of the season. But he had 14 points, five rebounds on five of 10 shooting. I think he'll be much better than this. Bogdanovich was great tonight with 19 points and a nice line. Not too much else to talk about. Neil, what do you think of the Kings, man? <clears throat> yeah, they're, I thought they'd be more competitive in this game. I'm surprised they, uh, they lost 122 to 108. Um, like you said, Bagley was the one curious thing that stood out for me. I thought his minutes would be increasing. It, like you said, the Clippers don't really have a big lineup. Um, Gortat only plays 14 minutes, and then Har Harrell plays uh, a lot of minutes, and he's not that big of a player, so maybe that was it. I know the, the Kings got down early, so they had to come back, so maybe they were going more with smaller lineup and a lot of three, three balls. So it won't take too much away. I guess the one player I want to talk about um, – and let me pull up his stats is Amon Shumpert. He's been pretty good this year. Um, not someone I've really been big on fantasy, but uh, overall in A-Cat Leagues, he's 159, and he's had some decent games. Um, I don't, because this is a line I think sometimes people see and they want to jump on, 16 points, 6 rebounds, 2 assists. 
three three pointers, two blocks. Certainly, he's always been known for defense, but this year he still doesn't do a lot. Uh, he's only averaging nine points a game, so I would not uh, look too much into this um, and not reach out and get him. I think there are better options out there, so I would caution to stay away. Other than that, I think these other guys are kind of who we know they are. Um, Bielitsa keeps falling, and um, like you said tonight, just I mean, I don't know if you mentioned his line, just uh, three points in 19 minutes. And... Um, that's my only takeaway. Do um, you have any thoughts on any more thoughts on Shumpert or anyone else? I uh, just want to note that the Kings have a really nice playoff s- schedule. So, man, you could like buy low. On, I, I really think Marvin Bagley could be a nice uh, fantasy asset. I, I really think they're going to uh, kind of force feed him into some nice value just by playing him big minutes and uh, getting him the ball. Uh, as the season winds down. So I think he could be a real solid asset down the stretch towards your fantasy playoffs. That's all I got, man. Yeah, he's 169 currently on a per-game basis, but obviously when he's getting more minutes, he produces. I think he'll finish around 100. Well, not 100, but I think when he plays 30 minutes a night, he'll be around 100 um, and play a Raider value, and I think that's that that's good enough to own. So let's see how it plays out. Um, on the Clipper side tonight, not a... Uh, not much um, from some of the starters. Well, Shai Gilgis Alexander had a great night, 17 points, 5 of 9 shooting, um, 4 rebounds, 5 assists. Let's see. I had a little freeze here on my app. Uh, Patrick Beverly had a solid night, 16 points, 10 rebounds, 8 assists. Great night from him, 1 steal, 1 block. We talked about how he could be serviceable with the absence of uh, Gallinari and... Um, Tonight he delivered. Again, I would caution this. The Kings are an up-tempo offense. Very friendly favor for for guards. Um, so I would not... I mean, you can roll the dice on him, but I'm a little skeptical. Uh, Lou Williams did not have a great night, just 12 points. He did have 10 assists, on, but he shot 2 of 16 from the field. So just really killed you with field goal percentage. Um, Tobias Harris had a solid night, 18 points. Not much here really jumps out at me. Uh, Beverly is the one guy who may not be owned who you might be thinking of. Again, I think you could, I mean, he's 258 on the season. I mean, excuse me, 188 on the season. I'm looking at a different player. Um, he's had a few good games here and there, but he's had some also struggled. He struggled as well. So I would not uh, recommend picking him up. This is this was the second best game of the season in terms of fantasy-wise. Uh, prior to this, um, he was more around outside the top 100, even when he was getting 30 plus minutes. So, if you need to gamble on somebody, maybe, but I would stay away. Uh, you have thoughts on the Clippers or Beverly? Man, uh, Beverly tempts me. And the one thing that I like about him is in the last uh, one, two, three, four, in the last five games, he has not played less than 34 minutes in the last five games. So the minutes are there, and uh, I don't know, man. It's so tough, you know, tonight having an outstanding game, but the last game only had two points and a really low productive game in 37 minutes in that last game. So I don't know what to think of a man. I I do play in some leagues, though, Neil, where I'm really desperate for some point guard help, and uh, I got – you know, um, a really low end guy that I can drop to maybe take a risk. I don't know, man. I got to really like think it over. Um, in standard leagues, if your team's pretty stacked, I would not touch him. But he's a little bit tempting to me due to uh, games like tonight. All right, that's all I got. Let's keep rolling. Uh, next game up, the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Chicago Bulls. This one was close. Neil, the Cavs getting the win, though, 104 to 101. Going to look at the Cavs and going to start with uh, someone who's been playing a little bit better. Seti Osman with 17 points, two steals, two assists, eight rebounds, two threes, six of 17 from the field, three of four from the line. Neil, you know, I was really high coming in, uh, really high on this guy coming in, was a huge disappointment. Started the season hot, then fell off. It's been a roller coaster. He's starting to get hot again. I don't know if I believe it or you can trust it, but I'm definitely going to keep an eye on it. Um, if you guys are streaming Zizic, you guys must are probably pretty happy. 8 points, 14 rebounds, 3 assists, a steal, a block, 4 of 11 from the field in 36 minutes. Burks was hot tonight. He had 18 points, 8 boards, 
three threes on six of 13 shooting, three of four from the line. Hood, who uh, I dropped in some leagues because he was hurt, it, it could be a worth a pickup again. Uh, seeing nice minutes, th- had 31, getting nice usage, took 13 shots here for 14 points, two steals, two assists, a rebound. See if he's available in deep leagues. Sexton, a little disappointing in this one. Only seven points on three of ten shooting. Off the bench, they got some nice production from Della Dova, who had 16 points in 22 minutes. Clarkson, he scores really well. 18 points from him, six assists, seven rebounds. Nance, still working his way back from injury, but it's not happened for him right now. Uh, I really only trust Clarkson off the bench right now. That's it. I wouldn't touch Della Dova. Nance, yeah, you probably would need to pick up Nance if he's available now. If you if you believe he's going to be a strong fantasy asset in the second half of the season, that's questionable though, right, Neil? Because we know uh, he's been pretty disappointing this year. Neil, what do you think of the Cavs? Yeah, I'll start with Nance there. I don't trust him at all. I know he can put up stats when he gets minutes. I just don't know what his role is going to be there even when he's fully healthy. He is working his way back, as you said, so his minutes should increase um, over the next few games. Where they top out at, does he get back in the starting lineup? Does he um, put up decent fantasy value? I am not betting on him this season. Uh, Colin Sexton, I've been high on his game, but it's not, um, come, it's not come to fruition uh, fantasy-wise or reality-wise this season, uh, perhaps next season. I did pick up Chetty Osman in my home league. Uh, I need a 3 and D guy, as I probably talk about here all the time. And he has been shooting better recently. Um, I really, you know, I like rookies when they start to get better, or first-year players when they start to get better, second half of the season. Um, and he seems to be doing that. His, his, his field goal percentage is not great, but over the last uh, five games, he's, he's uh, or four games, he's been twice in the 20s, two times 17 points. Um he had a six three-point night. He had two steals in f- four of the last six games, at least two steals. Um, so I think he's um, he's getting better, uh, at least from a box score perspective. I know there have been some blowouts, so some of these games is hard to trust. But even when they're a blowout, he still gets 32 to 38 minutes. So he's not, uh, even the blowout losses, he's playing lots of minutes, which is sometimes hard to count on when teams get blown out. Like we can see when we get to the Knicks, we can talk about that. But he seems to be consistent, so I picked him up, and I'm not going to start him just yet, but I'm going to hold on to him. Uh, no one else, though, from Cleveland I like. Uh, even Clarkson, as consistent as he's been as a sixth man, he's still uh, technically um, outside the top 120 from what I'm seeing on a per-game basis. So I would just like to have Tristan Thompson if he if he comes back. <laughs> His schedule will come back on the 13th of February, and we'll see how much time he gets then. Still waiting for word on love as well. Uh, potentially mid-February. Uh, that, that was my yeah. thoughts on Cleveland. Anything else to add? Yeah, you know, just want to note that the Cavs could move some of their veteran guys at the trade deadline, and uh, it, it's possible we see guys like uh, Alec Burks, Rodney Hood, uh, J.R. Smith, who's not even really in the rotation. But if, if like, uh, some of these wing guys get moved, like Hood or Burks, it could really open up more usage for Osmond. So um, I like that he's getting hot right now, and I, I hope he can have a big second half of the season. That would be outstanding. All right, man. Yeah, I think he is in that potential. I think, I, I think he's more likely than Sexton. Um, I thought when the season started, I thought Sexton was more likely to have the better second half of the season. Now I'm, I'm leaning towards Osmond, so we'll see how it plays out. Um, Chicago, my Chicago Bulls, um, they, um, let's see, let's start with, uh, I'm going to start with marketing really quickly. He had a great night, 21 points, 15 rebounds. Um, he can do every category, four three-pointers tonight, a steal, did not block, but that is something that's part of his game. He averages almost a block a game. Uh, Zach Levine, uh, double-double, 17 points, 12 rebounds. He's consistently pretty good. And, um, Currently, uh, he's fallen down, though, to 73rd in nine category leagues on a per game basis. He is he's 35th in eight category leagues. The turnovers have been huge for him. Um, Chris Dunn, we talked about how maybe he was going to get going. Um, I just think he's going to have some good nights and some OK nights. Tonight was just OK. He did have the seven assists, did have two steals, did have two blocks and did go two of two from the line, but only two of eight from the field. So just six points and no three pointers. So um, a below average line, he is right around 70th, and I think that is more likely his end spot than 50th is when 
when I first evaluated him this year. Um, other than that, um, Selden Jr. is the other person I want to talk about. Played 38 minutes tonight. Um, I'm trying to see if he started for someone else or if he, oh yeah, we know that um, Carter is out. We have Lopez at center. Anyway, Selden Jr. got the start over Chandler Hutchinson, who came off the, who did not play tonight. He put up 15 points, six rebounds, three assists, six of eight shooting, one steal, one block, and yet they still lost to Cleveland. Uh, what that tells me is, despite a decent line, don't touch this guy. Um, Lopez had a decent line as well, but they still lost. I'm not touching um, Lopez or Selden. Portis, even in 19, uh, even with the role that we thought he might be able to jumpstart and play well off the bench, not a great line, so I'm a little hesitant on him. So, so I'm not really gonna. I'm not really advocating for anyone here, uh, Adrian. Sorry. Um, uh, except for I think Dunn's gonna be decent. He'll have these games. Levine obviously and Markinen are fine. Uh, the rest I'm not really sold on. Um, any thoughts from you on the Bulls? Yeah, I'm really surprised. Uh, Bobby Portis uh, only getting 19 minutes in this one. Had a really nice game the other night, and um, you know with. Uh, Wendell Carter Jr. being gone, I just thought that uh, it would really open things up for Portis. I'm, I would still stick with Portis, but I agree with you, man. A hard to trust uh, most of these Bulls other than Lori Markinen and uh, maybe Levine. And uh, it's tough, man, but uh, I'm really hoping, Neil, that your Bulls get a high draft pick. <laughs> so Yeah, me too. Thank you. <laughs> well, well the, We'll see how it turns out. All right, let's move on. Let's uh, jump over to the next game, the Milwaukee Bucks and the Oklahoma City Thunder. This was a tight game. I was looking forward to this one. Um, two powerhouse teams in the Thunder getting the victory here, 118 to 112. Going to start with Milwaukee and got to start with Giannis. Uh, where is, let's take a look at Giannis really quick, Neil. Nine category leagues. It was currently sitting as player 13 on the season. So uh, somewhat a little disappointing here if you drafted Giannis, but uh, do not worry. I think he's going to explode in the second half of the season. Uh, big double-double, 27 points, 18 rebounds, a steal, three threes. He's normally not a big three guy. Love that he uh, shot three of five from downtown today for – 8 of 22 shooting is not great, uh, but he was 8 of 12 from the line, and uh, he should be locked and loaded. Uh, Middleton, 22 points, 6 assists, 4 rebounds, doing what he does. He's having a great season. He's 8 of 15 from the field. Three threes from him as well, 3 of 4 from the line. Brogdon, man. They, t- Neil, you and I, we talk about this all the time, that the Bucks, they've got – a large number of players that can put up fantasy value. And we saw it here tonight. Brogdon having 18 points, six rebounds, four assists, a full line. Uh, Bledsoe maybe was the disappointing one here, although he has been playing really well lately. So I would just shrug this one off. 11 points from him, a steal, three assists, six rebounds, one three on five of 14 shooting. Brooke Lopez, man, he played well. 19 points, two blocks of steal. Two assists, four rebounds, five threes from your center. That's outstanding. Shooting a very efficient six to seven from the field. Great game from him. Not too much to talk talk about off the bench. Don't trust any of these bench guys. Neil, what are your thoughts on the Milwaukee Bucks? Yeah, I thought they might actually get the win here. Didn't work out for them. Giannis didn't shoot great. Uh, eight of 22 from the field. I think that might have been the reason why they fell short. Um, other than that, he, like you said, I think he's going to have a strong, he's going to be playing his heart out in the second half of the season. Uh, nine cat leagues, he's struggling a bit with those turnovers, but eight cat leagues solidly in the top 10. Um, yeah, Brogdon's been solid. Lopez has been solid. Middleton, Bledsoe, and then everyone else is outside the top 200 on this team. So don't trust anyone outside those, uh, the starting five and they continue to be consistently very good. Um, so nothing to add to, add to your breakout breakdown. Um, on the OKC side, um, Paul George still having a phenomenal season tonight. Thirty six points. He had thirteen rebounds, eight three pointers. Adrian three steals. Um, Westbrook a very low, but again triple double. Thirteen, thirteen, and eleven. Shot just five of twenty, and they, these guys still won. 
That's what's really crazy. Two three-pointers, a steal, and a block. Um, Terrence Ferguson had a pretty good night, night, but we know it's it's very consistent. Adams kind of did what he normally does, 14 points, 8 rebounds, 7 to 10 from the line, I mean from the field. Uh, Jeremy Grant um, had a solid night. Uh, free throws is the one thing he does hurt you in. Tonight, just 5 of 8 from the line. Uh, Schroeder is the one guy maybe he's on the bubble. Tonight is the why I think you can own him. 14 points, 7, rebound, I mean seven assists, 2 rebounds, 2 three-pointers, 4 or 5 from the field, from the line, excuse me. Um, nothing really is changing for me. OKC, okay, I know New Orleans had a decent night. Noel, that is 6.6 6 rebounds, um, a couple blocks, but it's it's too little for me to even consider owning in standard leagues. So no changes here for me on the Thunder. Do you have any thoughts on those players? No, nothing really for me to add. You know, we know who the studs are and who the guys are. And, you know, they're fringy guys. We're not trusting any of those guys. So, uh, yeah, not much for me here. I'm going to jump over to the next game, the Utah Jazz and the Minnesota Timberwolves. This one was probably like the low, the lone blowout of the evening. And uh, Jazz getting the victory here, 125-111. The Timberwolves really missing the defense of Robert. Covington, hoping he can get back soon. I'm going to take a look at the Jazz, though. Going to start with Donovan Mitchell, who's slowly turning things around. 29 points, 5 assists, 4 rebounds on 10 of 22 shooting. Did have two threes and and shot 7 to 10 from the line. Joe Ingles, I love to see this. 15 points, 2 steals, 6 assists, 2 rebounds, 2 threes on 5 of 11 shooting. It's a pretty good line from him. Let's hope he can um, start improving and getting better in the second half of the season. Gobert with 17 points, two steals, three blocks, four assists. Uh, very efficient seven of eight from the field. It's a pretty good game from him. Rubio played well, 18 points, two steals with eight assists, uh, one three on eight of 14 shooting. Favors a uh, low end double double, eleven points, eleven rebounds, a steal, a block, and assists, one three on five of eight shooting. You know, off the bench, man, Crowder uh, uh, played nice, fifteen points, all of his shots threes. He sunk five threes for fifteen points, two assists, three rebounds, and uh, Corver has doing some nice shooting as well off the bench, thirteen points from him, three threes on three six shooting. Neil, what are your thoughts on the Utah Jazz? Yeah, Mitchell's interesting. You know, he's been a bit of a disappointment from where he was drafted, but the last month he's he's 27th overall in eight category leagues, which is kind of where he was drafted, I think. I don't know. He might have gotten the second round. I was thinking he probably went in the second or third round in most leagues. Um, so definitely at least an improvement over his overall 47th value. Um, Ingles, nice to see him bounce back a little bit. He's been a disappointment this year. I own him in a couple places, so... Um, that's been uh, something I've been focusing on a little bit more. Crowder, uh, he has nights like this. Um, he's a potential 3 and D guy. Uh, five threes tonight. Um, what he tends to do, though, is hurt you with field goal percent and um, free throw percent, both of those. Not much in defensive stats. So if you need those as well, be, be um, cognizant before you pick him up. So I don't recommend him. Um, but not much else to uh, talk about here on Utah. Any other thoughts before I go over to um, Minnesota? No. Nope. The, Co- the Covington Lust Minnesota team. Um, Towns, again, leading this team. At least, well, I guess technically it was Wiggins tonight. 35 points. I'll start with Wiggins. 35 points tonight for him. He shot well from the line, 6 of 7. Shot well from the field, 13 and 23. Three three pointers and three steals. This was kind of the Wiggins when he was drafted overall number one that I think a lot of people were expecting. You know, a high score, highly efficient defensive stats. Um, but this is uh, unfortunately not his case. He's still outside the top. He's 147th overall in ACAT leagues, which is crazy considering his name recognition. Um, Car Anthony Towns, uh, 22 points, six rebounds, seven assists, six of 10 from the, line, from the field, seven of, 10, seven of eight from the line. Three three pointers, three blocks. Um, Josh Okoji gets a start here, thirty minutes. Um, they, they're bis- they're missing both Derek Rose still and Teague were out along with as long along with Covington. Tyus Jones also out. 
So their backcourt. Um, we talked about this before. At least I think we talked about this. Bayless. He's the one I think to stream. Tonight, another phenomenal game. 19 points on 6 of 13 shooting. 3 of 4 from line. 6 assists. 3 rebounds. 4 three-pointers. Uh, no steals. No blocks. I think as long as Rose... Um, as long as they don't have a point guard, um, you can stream him. Teague could be back anytime now. He's questionable. Rose could be back anytime now. But until that time, Bayless is someone streamable. Um, Taj Gibson and Sarge, unfortunately, are not. And um, everyone else is holding steady. Thoughts on the Timberwolves? Love your take on Bayless. Hey, if uh, Jones, Rose, Teague, they're all going to miss the next one, I think Bayless is going to be in for a nice... He's, I mean, he has to play big minutes just because they got nobody else. And uh, he's capable of having games like he did uh, tonight. So, yeah, I think he's worth a short-term stream. But as you said, we could see Teague back pretty quickly. And uh, really hoping that this team gets back to hell soon. Neil, in the uh, hoop ball staff league, somebody dropped Robert Covington. I snatched him up. Uh, I, I mean, he's missed a lot of time. It's, you know... This is a league where, you know, if you're out of the playoffs, you're desperate. You got to do things that you want, you don't want to do, like dropping a guy like Robert Cummington. I understand that. But um, I, I had to snatch him up because he was playing really well before he got hurt. I'm hoping he can come back soon. All right. Let's move over to the next game, the Raptors and the Mavericks. And this one was a close one. And uh the Raptors getting the win here, 123 to 120. And I'm really jealous because I'm going to go in the Raptors. And, you know, you get to talk about Luka Doncic, who looked outstanding tonight. But I'm going to look over at the Raptors side. I'm going to start with Kyle Lowry. Happy that this guy is playing and is healthy. 19 points, two blocks of steal, nine assists, five rebounds, five threes tonight on five of 14 shooting from the field. Four four from the line. It's a good game from him. Siakam, 14 points, a steal, two assists, five rebounds, one three on four of 11 shooting. He was a perfect five of five from the line. Serge Ibaka with the double-double, 11 points, 11 rebounds, two blocks, a steal, two assists, three of nine shooting from the field, five of eight from the line. Kawhi Leonard with a nice 33-point game, 10 rebounds, three assists, uh, three threes, 10 of 23 from the field, 10 of 11 from the line. That's outstanding from him. Green, uh, I moved this guy to my bench, Neil. I don't trust him until further notice, but yeah, 10 points, two steals, an assist, seven rebounds, two threes. That's actually serviceable. A nice low end line right there. He was four or six from the field. Uh, Van Vliet, who was playing really well when Toronto was was uh, banged up. He had 13 points, six assists in just 21 minutes. Not really trusting anyone else here, Neil. Valanciunas is still out. Uh, what do you think of the Toronto Raptors? Yeah, I think the two things, the two players I want to talk about are Van Fleet. Uh, he, he is, I think we're starting when either Kawhi or Lowry's out. We mentioned that, but not when they're both in. It just seems to back it up. Um, tonight's performance the other one is Dan ah, danny green you know his last two games have been serviceable um in the positive um for sure and overall the last four have not been that bad uh they don't look great but he tends to get some defensive stats um some three pointers and um i don't know adrian it's tough i know he's got a very ugly line but he's holding firm just out to the top hundred so I'm tempted to pick him up if he's out there anywhere and throw him in there. Although one bad game and I'll, I'll like be cursing myself. So I know, <laughs> I know how hard it is to throw Danny Crane into your lineup, but the numbers so far seem to be bearing it out. Um, uh, those were only two guys I thought that made an impression on me tonight. Um, as far as fantasy changes go, um, on the Dallas side, like you said, Luka Doncic, you were the smart one. You traded for him. I traded him away before the season started thinking, you know what? Carlisle doesn't play rookies that much. How good can this guy really be first year? Adrian, triple doubles. And not just like a light triple double. 35 points, 12 assists. I mean, 12 rebounds, 10 assists, 14 of 24. He took 24 shots in the field. 
he has the green light on anything he wants to do in this offense with a coach that is hyper strict. Um, three three pointers. He does struggle a bit from the line. He's below 80%, which I thought he'd be above that. Four of six tonight from the line. Um, and he only had three. Yeah, this is, he's, just, he's just amazing. He's just absolutely amazing. And this is going against Toronto, one of the best teams in the league. I know they were home, but Toronto's come off a couple, a couple losses um, as of late. So they, you know, they're going to play really hard. They, they eked out the win. They've got a, you know, Danny Green's a great perimeter defender. Um, so is uh, the other guys out there as well. So um, Kawhi Leonard, this is just he's just phenomenal. I just, I just wish I don't know why I, I, I I'm just kicking myself. Anyway, uh, Dennis Smith Jr. I mean, uh, yeah, Dennis Smith Jr. had a good night as well. Thirteen points, four rebounds, six assists, three pointer, steal a block. Um, Harrison Barnes um, and Wesley Matthews points league maybe. Other than that, I would stay away from them. Not shooting great. Three of eleven for Barnes. Three of nine for Matthews. Uh, Dorian Finney-Smith, not worth owning. Maxi Kleber, someone I thought he had, might have potential, way out of the rotation now, just 12 minutes tonight. Um, and then DeAndre Jordan, who I thought might have put up a nice game against kind of a soft center situation in Toronto, just 11, 11 points tonight, just took four shots. It was all Luka all the time. Um, what are your thoughts on the Mavericks? Oh, I love Luka, man. Let's send this kid to the All-Star game, can we? I mean... He's been so outstanding. Uh, Neil, I think the youngest player in NBA history or the first rookie to have a 30-point triple-double, and uh, he's just been outstanding. It's just What else can we say about this kid? He's just amazing. Uh, all right, that's all I got. Let's keep rolling here. A lot of games tonight, man. Let's keep chugging along. The Wizards and the Spurs, and the Spurs getting a big win here, 132 to 119. Uh, I'm going to take a look at the Wiz and start with uh, Trevor Ariza, who played pretty nice. <laughs> 20 points, two steals, two assists, four rebounds, four threes on six of ten, 17 shooting, four of six from the line. Bradley Beal has been outstanding. 21 points from him, four steals, seven assists, four rebounds, three of three. I'm sorry, three of eight from downtown, eight of 20. From the field, Sadoransky, this is a great game from him. Flirting with the, the triple-double here. 21 points, 8 assists, 9 rebounds, 1 steal, 2 threes on an efficient 8 of 13 shooting, 3 of 4 from the line. Congratulations if you were able to pick this guy up off the wire uh, when John Wall was injured. Uh, Jeff Green with 15 points, 3 assists, 1 rebounds. Three threes on five of ten shooting. It feels like a very Jeff Green type of line right there. This is a great so this is a great game from uh, Thomas Bryant, who I'm hoping has a big second half of the season. Fifteen points, ten rebounds, two assists. We would have liked some defensive stats as well, but I love the nice uh, production in scoring and rebounding. And usually he's good for a block or two. Five of seven from the field, one of two from he, he he gave you a three tonight. That's a pretty nice four or six from the line. Uh, Otto Porter doing his thing off the bench. Do not worry about him coming off the bench. Still getting starter type minutes and having decent usage. Only 13 points from him, three steals, four assists. But he should have much nicer games than this. Uh, Neil, what are your thoughts on the Washington Wizards? Yeah, let's talk about the two guys that. Um have been pickups, uh, Bryant and Sandoransky. I wasn't sure who was going to be better over the last month. Um, it's clearly been Sandoransky. He's around 50th. Bryant's around 70th. I thought they'd both be in that 70 to 80 range. So they both really have exceeded my expectations. Um, we'll see if they keep it up. Um, but I think they're both going to be solid the rest of the way. And like you said, Porter Jr. is safe. Uh, he may not deliver the value that we had hoped, um, but uh, I think he's going to be safe. Uh, clearly good enough to own in mid la- mid to late round value. Um, and then Bradley Beal. Like, I was worried that once Wall went down, his field goal percentage would just kind of take a hit because he'd be, you know, just chucking up a lot more shots. He is doing that, but he's, he's just dropped down to 45% um, from like 47%. So it's not too much of a dip. Um, which I was nervous about. So good to see he's holding steady and, uh, 
we'll see if this guy is i'm sure he's gonna be the all-star game um if luca doesn't make it there <laughs> luca has got to make it right they got to make it <laughs> i don't know what the rules are for rookies now but uh he should be in there anyway um san antonio i gotta do that side right yes yes thank you i got confused there for a second <laughs> um Derek white he he has been delivering 16 points he's shot very efficient six to seven from the field four or four from the line a steal four assists five rebounds just a great night from him um Bryn forbes someone who i've been tracking 16 four and four tonight another saw night from him very efficient six to nine from the field four three pointers no defensive stats pal gasol plays nine minutes um i'm not sure what's going on with him his last game he put up a pretty decent line Rudy Gay, thought to be maybe injured. He's been solid this season. 11 points, 6 rebounds, 4 assists tonight. When Marcus Aldridge, um, 30 points tonight. Another great night along with, oh, I should mention, um, they were missing DeRozan. He was out tonight. So, not playing, which might explain the bump in Forbes and White's um, uh, usage tonight. Um not really it. Bertrand's had a nice night off the bench. He made five of eight for three pointers, which really buoyed his night. Otherwise, can't trust him too much. Uh, along with with Patty Mills and Bellinelli off the bench. Um, not much else here to, uh, as far as changes go. Do you have any thoughts on um, San Antonio? Yeah, you know, uh, no DeRozan tonight, which I think really helped. Uh, uh, provide some extra usage for guys like Forbes and White. Although I I do think that Forbes and White, uh, especially White, need to be owned in most standard leagues. But uh, yeah, not too much to add. You know, we know who the guys are: DeRozan and Aldridge and uh, Rudy Gay should be owned. And uh, yeah, Neil, I get tempted sometimes by some of these bench guys on uh, San Antonio um, Bertons with twenty one points, but. Uh, Bellinelli, there's times he shoots well. Uh, he had a nice line tonight, but it's just so hard to trust any of these guys night to night. Their minutes can fluctuate, and you can, I mean, they could get 10 minutes the, the next night. So, uh, really hard to trust these fringy guys on San Antonio. All right, next game up. Man, we are rolling uh, on this busy slate. The Magic and the Rockets, the Rockets getting the victory here. I, I got to see a lot of this one, and it was much closer than, than I thought it would be. Um, I'm going to look at the Magic. Um, the Rockets getting the victory, 103-98. to I'm going to look at the Magic, but, Neil, for the Rockets, really happy to see the return of Chris Paul tonight. Didn't have um, uh, your uh, blowout, blow-up, CP3 type line, but first game back, just really happy that this guy is back. A lot of fantasy um, fantasy people have been waiting, have have had him sitting on the bench, so happy to see him return. Uh, let's take a look at the Magic. Let's start with Aaron Gordon, who had a nice double-double. 23 points, 10 rebounds, 4 assists, 3 threes on 9 of 18 shooting. It's a good Aaron Gordon game right there. Vucevic, uh, doing what he does, which is score and rebound, 19 points, 17 boards, also giving you a lot of other goodies, five assists, two steals, a block, eight of 19 from the field. He's having an outstanding season. Going to take a quick look. Neil Vucevic is currently the eighth number eight player on the season for nine category leagues. I'm not sure where his average draft position was, but I guarantee it was nowhere near uh, the first round value that he's currently giving you. So congrats if you drafted him. Fournier with a nice game, 18 points, two steals, two assists, three rebounds, two threes on eight of 16 shooting. It's a great game from him. DJ Augustine with a low end line, 10 points, a steal, three assists, uh, two rebounds, two threes. Jonathan Isaac, uh, you know, this is now a Jonathan Isaac type line. Low end scoring with seven points, giving you a, a, a trickling, a little bit of low end stuff here with an assist, eight rebounds. I do like the defensive contribution he gave you tonight with the two steals, two blocks. You know, I wish I had him in my lineup just for those defensive uh, counting stats that he gave you. That's pretty nice. And uh, th this is kind of who he is now, man. This is what I expect from him. 
Terrence Ross, uh, great guy. I think if you picked him up, you probably are pretty happy with him, even though he's coming off the bench, getting 30 minutes, getting nice usage, took 16 shots, only made six of them for 15 points, a block, two assists, six rebounds. He did have three threes tonight. Neil, what do you think of the Magic? Yeah, like you mentioned, uh, Vucevic has been phenomenal all year. We talked about him. Gordon having a nice game as well, double-doubling. Um, yeah, over the last month, Ross is uh, just inside the top 100 in a category league, so definitely streamable if you need a three-point a three point specialist. Um, he's averaging, I think, over two and a half in that stretch, um, almost getting a steal game if you need that as well. Field goal percentage is 43%, so not too bad. Um just get you a smattering of the rest of the stats, but um, good enough to have some value. DJ Augustine, another player that's um, low-end point guard. I'm trying to think if I'd rather have Augustine or Beverly. I think I'd still rather have rather have Augustine. Um, it's tough, though. Uh, neither one I'd rather have, to be honest, but if I had to pick one, I'd probably go with him. He's had some decent games. And uh, let's see what happens to the trade deadline, see if Mo Bamba can... Uh, Tonight, 14 minutes, nothing on the uh, – absolutely nothing, Adrian, across the entire board of his stat set. So um, we'll see if that changes, uh, if his minutes uh, jump up, if Vucevic gets traded, if anyone else gets moved here in Orlando, if they go into sort of that tank mode. On to the Houston side, uh, even with Chris Paul's return, James Harden continues to be – um, fantasy goal, let's just say that. Um, tonight, 40 points, I believe, on 14 of 27, so just over 50% from the field, 8 of 9 from the line, four three-pointers, a steal, three blocks, 11 rebounds, six assists. My gosh, he is unstoppable. Um, Chris Paul in his, in his day back, uh, 25 minutes, 12 points. And uh, just took eight shots, made four of them, though. Two of two from the line, two, made two three-pointers, three steals. So the quickness is there, six assists. The passing was there, the five rebounds. He's looking just fine from a box score perspective. I did not actually get to see the game. I imagine he would not be put out there if he was not feeling completely fine. Uh, Kenneth Fareed, um, if he hasn't been picked up yet, certainly stream this guy, pick him up right away. Maybe too late, though. 12 points tonight, 10 rebounds, five assists on five of nine shooting. His free throw percentage will hurt you. Two of five today. Um, career, I believe, is in the 50%, 60% range. Two steals, though, tonight will get you a, d- a low-end double-double almost every night in this offense um, and may get you some defensive stats and good field goal percentage. Um, Eric Gordon continued to start. I was curious to see how that was. this was going to play out. Um, he played 37 minutes, 16 points, five rebounds, two assists, six of 14 shooting, four three-pointers. I, if I could trust his field goal percentage, I would pick him up, but that's the one that really hurts me, and I don't trust it, so I'm avoiding him. Uh, P.J. Tucker, great player out there, but not much fantasy value tonight. 39 minutes, just five points on two of five shooting. He is he is my version of Danny Green. He is technically good enough to be starting, but it's nights like this that make me unable to hold on to him emotionally. So. Um, I am avoiding him as well. Any thoughts on the Rockets? Oh man, uh, James Harden, how he's just been outstanding. I believe in the month of January, he is averaging 40 points per game. And, uh, man, just the top score in the game right now. He's just amazing to watch. I'm really happy to see Chris Paul back. As I mentioned, as you said, Neil, go get Kenneth Fareed if he's somehow still there. Probably not. He's probably gone. All right. That's all that I got. One more game. Am, am I right here, Neil? Am I going well, crazy? Well, there's actually see? two. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Two there's games? one okay. There's one more to just about wrap up. So we got to just, okay. I'm, I'm not going to let you go early tonight, Adrian. No, I'm, I'm glad. Kidding. If you need to go, you have to. I'm just nope. joking. I'm glad you told me. I, I only pulled up. Uh, what I do is I grab all the, I, I open up all the box scores in separate screens. That way there's no lag time. So I'm glad you said that because I just missed, uh, I missed that last game. Suns, wait, Suns and the Lakers. It's and then what's time. the Suns and the Lakers. And then oh, what's the uh, heat and the um, heat Knicks. and the Knicks. Okay, perfect. All right. Well, um, can we jump into this Suns and Lakers game? This is done, right? Yeah, this is done. Yeah. 
Yep. Are you seeing Let's it down on your side? 116 to 102, Lakers over the Suns. And uh, I'm going to take a look at the Phoenix side and going to start with Devin Booker doing his thing. 21 points, six assists, two rebounds, no threes tonight, which is a little disappointing, but nine of 18 shooting, three of three from the line. We'll take that. Josh Jackson, who we talked about uh, streaming while um, t- while Warren is out, and you know he was he was decent in this one. Twelve points, two blocks, eight rebounds, one assist, four of fifteen shooting is not good, but, but he was four or five from the line. Uh, Mikkel Bridges, this is nice. I hope this guy can get going, man. Sixteen points. A uh, steal and assist, six rebounds, three threes, shot five of nine from the field, three of four from the line. The low usage kind of scares me, Neil. You know, if the shot wasn't falling, let's say he only makes one or two shots out of the nine he took, this is a, a much worse line. So uh, him hitting those three threes really was big tonight. Uh, Bender, I don't trust him. He only got five points in 13 minutes in a start. Um what else? Kelly Oubre, love him. 17 points, a steal, a block, two assists, five rebounds, two threes. He only shot 4 of 14 from the field, but he was 7 of 8 from the line, so that's nice. Uh, Neil, your thoughts on the Phoenix Suns? Yeah, let's talk about McCall Bridges. Uh, I think he's the one that some people, he gets a lot of hype, at least um, uh, from a fantasy perspective. I am not buying it um, this year. He's he's over. He's in the one forty six on the year. I mean, the last month he's been just inside the one one twenty. But um, with Booker back and um, other guys taking shots, like you said tonight, uh, he shot five of nine. Typically shooting forty two percent on the year. So if he misses a couple of those, it's a much worse line. And um, I'm staying away from him for the rest of the season. I do um, I do think if you're in a points league, Josh Jackson Jackson, excuse me, should be owned. I, I worry about his percentages. Um, and if you just need those categories for a short period of time and can, can absorb bad percentages, then he'll be fine. Um, oh, the one thing, person I want to mention is Rashawn Holmes. He is no longer injured. He is back, played 27 minutes, uh, 12 points, 10 rebounds, low on double double, six of some from the line. That's really good for him. A steal, five blocks. We know he can rebound, he can block shots. He is an incredible athlete. Um, so good to see that around. If you need those categories, you should pick him up or at least stream him, in my opinion, um, while Aiton's out. Um, on the Lakers side, tonight um, they started Rondo, who uh, played 42 minutes. Um, not a great line, though. Eight points, four rebounds. Did have 10 assists. Uh, missed his three-pointer. Uh, four and nine from the field, and it's just a single steal. Zubach got the start. This is really interesting, Adrian. 24 points, 16 rebounds. This is a monster line. Nine of 16 from the field, six of seven from the line, four blocks. Um, I cannot figure out who's going to start and get big minutes at the uh, center position there. I'm waiting for LeBron to come back to try to figure that out before I do anything. I don't know when LeBron's really going to come back and how hard he's going to play if this team is going to really push for the playoffs or not. Um, it's either going to be Zubach or it's going to be McGee. I don't think Tyson Chandler is going to be part of it, um, even if he does start and play a few minutes. Um, tonight, Ingram played 32 minutes, had 22 points. Points league guy, I did not trust this 9 of 11 from the field goal. Um, this percentage is really high tonight. Uh, let's see. Oh, Caldwell Pope, uh, 36 minutes tonight. They've, they've been just decimated balls out along with LeBron, along with Kuzma. It looks like, so just the team's decimated tonight. Um, so a lot of guys backing, uh, coming in and playing well. We'll see if Zubach, I'm not going to pick up yet. Like I said, I'm going to wait for LeBron. Uh, no changes for me holding Pat until this rotation gets a little more clear. Any thoughts from you on the Lakers? Man, I think in deep, leagues if you're desperate for center 
take a flyer on Zubak. Uh, the last five games has scored in double figures, has a 26-point game, a 17-point game, 18-point game, had 24 tonight, is a, is a good rebounder, 16 rebounds tonight, had a 12-rebound game a few games ago as well. So um, I think he's worth a stream in deeper leagues. As you said, the return of LeBron could hurt him, but... Um, Hey, if you need, just need to take a flyer, I'm okay with taking a shot on him. In deep leagues, in standard leagues, we still can just sit back and wait and see how it uh, pans out, I think. All right, one more game, and I apologize. I probably should have put this game in front of that Laker game. I don't know how I miss this one. The Heat and the Knicks. And uh, the Heat getting the victory here, 106-97. to And I'm going to take a look at the Heat. Wayne Ellington's back. And uh, Tyler Johnson was out in this one. So uh, nice to see Wayne Ellington return 19 points. We know he can shoot. We know he can contribute from downtown the three-point range. And that's what he did tonight. Four threes with 19 points, a rebound. Uh, It was 3-3 from the line. If you need some scoring, if you need some threes, Probably in deeper leagues because, you know, we we always talk about how deep Miami is and they have so many guys. So in standard leagues, really hard to trust. But if you're really desperate for points and threes in deep leagues, maybe Ellington's worth a pickup there. Uh, Josh Richardson, 12 points, two steals, two assists, one block, uh, three rebounds, two threes on three of 10 shooting. Winslow with 11 points, one block, six assists, five rebounds. Two threes on four of nine shooting. James Johnson with 13 points, two steals, three assists, two rebounds, one three on six of 13 shooting. Whiteside with the double double, 13 points, 16 rebounds, two assists, three blocks. This is a great game from Whiteside. Love the three blocks with the double double. Six of 10 shooting from the field, one of two from the line. Like everybody contributing here, even Wade uh, having a nice contribution off the bench. He had 15 points, 10 assists, uh, five of 12 shooting, four of four from the line. Neil, what are your thoughts on the Miami Heat, man? Yeah, it's um, Ellington is back. This this team is so crowded, though. It's hard to trust anybody. Um, outside of Richardson and Whiteside, uh, Winslow for points leagues. Um, he's still, even with this great run over the last Ooh. month, he is still not doing, he's still 105. So I guess technically he is good enough to be owned. Um, the shooting has not been that bad. So maybe you can pick him up, but I worry what's going to happen when, um, they start to just, uh, I could see him messing around with this, this lineup and then we'll see what happens to the all-star break. You know, maybe maybe they do get rid of some guys, and we can get more clarity. But uh, I'm not trusting too many players here, um, so I just don't trust it. I know there's a lot of talent here; a lot of these guys can produce, but I just don't trust the minutes. I do trust it for Winslow, so maybe um, he's shooting better than I thought. So maybe he he um, can be picked up if he's still out there in your leagues. All right, uh, last team on the slate tonight: the New York Knicks. Uh, just 97 points tonight. Um, this is one of those teams where we can never count on the rotation of minutes. Um, this is a great example of that. Tonight, Noah Vonley, just 25 minutes, just had two points. And I think this guy's safe. <laughs> so it tells you, tells you about who's really safe. Uh, Knox, um, worried about his shooting, 22 minutes tonight, just four points. Lance Thomas gets the start uh, for the injured Cornette. Um, uh, Moutier is out as well. Cantor, uh, a DNP. I don't know if he's ever going to play again for the Knicks. We'll see. Um, Nelikina starts, but just plays 15 minutes. Hardaway Jr., the one guy who's been their best player and we can trust 31 minutes tonight, 22 points, six rebounds, five assists, six to six from the line, two, three pointers and a steal. Great night from him. Who's only plays 30 minutes, but I don't really think I'm really paying attention to this Dotson or Robinson. I the only players that I want are Hardaway and then I thought Vonley, but tonight makes me a little nervous. We'll see what happens after the All-Star break. Maybe Robinson and Cornett. Um Robinson and I played 23 minutes. Um not a great line though. 6.7 rebounds, 3 of 5 shooting, 0 for 2 from the free throw line. Did have three steals and two blocks. So defensive stats will be there. We'll see 
if his free throw percentage though is big offset. Um, any thoughts on you on Robinson or anyone else on the Knicks? Oh man, I am so tired of chasing these Knicks. I picked up Alonzo Trier last week and now, you know, only 20 minutes tonight with a low end line. And uh, I'm, I, I can't count how many Knicks I've chased this season. And mostly it just turns out in disappointment. Uh, I like to think that Knox and Vonley and Robinson could be really solid guys for the uh, stretch run of this season. But I don't know, man. It's it's the Knicks. I can't count on anything with them. So um, you, you can take a flyer, but I'm, my expectations are low. Any uh, closing thoughts on the Knicks or this night in general, Neil? Um. No, I don't think I don't know if we missed anything on the injury front. I just want to double check my uh, feed here to see. Oh, D'Anthony Melton's going to be out a few weeks. That's what I saw. I don't think it really matters. Um, he wasn't doing much when he was starting, and the Suns have a lot of players that uh, they throw in there anyway in the backcourt. So I'm not really doesn't really impact um, how I see this team. Any thoughts on you from that or anything else from tonight? Uh, Frank Nielakina left the Knicks game with sore growing, so uh, he may miss a game or two. I don't think he returned in this one while he only saw 15 minutes, so um, I don't know. I'd like to say maybe that opens up some more minutes for Burke or – but I don't know. Moutier also missing time. So, you know, maybe Burke could be a short-term stream. But, again, who knows? With the Knicks, you never know. Uh, that's about it. That's about all I got. Um, is that it? Should we wrap this thing up? Yeah, let's do it. Let's. Uh, you want to take us out? All right. Thank you guys for listening, supporting the show. Hit us up on Twitter. He's at Ball with Neil. I'm at Adrian Benjamins. We love hearing from you guys. We'll be back tomorrow with another nice slate of games. Uh, NBA action, man. We're we're uh, we're getting closer to the All Star break. I'm actually kind of looking forward to the All Star break, Neil. It'll be nice to uh, take a look at our teams at that spot. You know, just kind of readjust, take a short little break, and then head into that last stretch run of the season full blast, man. So, uh, but we're in for a nice week of action. So we will be back tomorrow. Thank you guys so much.